In this video, we'll be looking at the urban hierarchy and more specifically the rank size rule and the primate city rule that goes along with the, the whole idea of an urban hierarchy. <clears throat> so, uh, in class, we've been looking at the central place theory, but in this video, the concepts and terms we'll be using to expand on that understanding is the urban hierarchy along with the hamlet, village, town, city, metropolis, and megalopolis. And then the rank size rule and primate city rules. So let's get started. Um, when we looked at services last week, we, we thought about what things do we need to live by or things that are provided for us for when people pay for that. And when we think about our daily needs, uh, it's going to largely define what kinds of services we will find near us or will want to settle near um, and where we have access. And so when we think about the things that if you put, took them out of our accessible daily range, say 50 miles, um, would you really want to be isolated from the things that you use or the services you use most? So when we think about that applied to an entire population, um, we see that access to these services becomes very important and the services that are, are needed or desired by, by the masses are going to actually be in the locations that are accessible to the most people. And what we start to see is a natural process of what's called an urban hierarchy that begins to develop. So on last week, we talked about services such as most of the ones that listed below. But if we were to separate them out um, between low order services, these are things like gas stations, grocery stores, auto repair, um, banks. These are things that people wouldn't want to travel very far for. In other words, their range are, is very limited. And because they're, they're limited and they don't have as need, the same size threshold or the number of people, population supporting it, we see them more frequently in the landscape. In other words, most small towns have a gas station. Most small towns or cities or villages have a bank um, or some sort of small convenience store. On the other end of the spectrum, the high order services tend to be those things that need a much larger threshold. In other words, it needs a larger population to be support their existence and the range in which that people are willing to travel to access these particular services is much greater. So whether it's a, a, a large university or college, a very specialized type of store, um, like medical care for example, uh, HCMC has a high level of critical care that no other hospital has really in the region. Um, and so people travel by heli, you know, to the helipad just for emergency cases that they wouldn't otherwise normally go to HCMC. Um, very specific things like professional sports teams. The stadiums are usually located in central business districts or the CBD where they're most accessible to people throughout the region. So when we look at the services that are um, across the landscape, depending on the, t the urban hierarchy, um, will really determine uh, and, and reflect that whether it's a, the low order or high order services that you'll see. Um, for example, when we look at hamlets, this is the smallest size of urban settlement. And this is in, mostly in a rural place. These are, tend to be very small populations um, and have very limited s services whatsoever. There may be a gas station or perhaps a stoplight in town but oftentimes it's centered around one basic thing um, in town. Perhaps, again, as you see in this I image, a, a church, for example. Um, but this is the lowest rat lat ladder of the urban hierarchy. And so for most basic services, even, uh, people would have to travel outside of the hamlet to receive them. The next step on this village hierarchy is a village, or in the urban hierarchy is a village. And you look across um, the this landscape it's going to be a little bit different. Um, there's very limited, it's still limited in size. You can generally walk the entire village and, and reasonably without having a car. Um, and there are a few more services. So there might be a clothing store, there may be um, a hardware store, there are some uh, more maybe specialty restaurants. But it's relative, relatively limited even at that. The next one would be town. Um, and this is where you start to feel the like a miniature urban setting um, and usually this is where uh, you have maybe a major now a major industry or a major corporation um, or some specialized service that might be available usually manufacturing in the, in the more uh, outskirts um, but there is usually a, an urban center a main street that is 
uh, where most of the population is going to be concentrated around. Um, and these are usually up to about 50,000 people. Again, some of the major um, or more specialized services might have to be uh, you know, accessed uh, at, a, at another level, like a city. And so if we take a city, these are going to have more definable areas. You're going to have a, an area where it's very um, marked by industrial sort of characteristics, um, very specific commercial areas. We might have like a main street where you have a commercial district where you have different shopping. So uh, very dedicated to these areas, then they're developed as such. Um, and then residential areas where you see more families and you see very sp intentional design to create residential areas. When we look at the, the cities, they tend to be um, where you might find a county seat or a, a, a place of, org of local government. And you're also, again, going to see a much broader variety of services. Now, this is going to be up to about 250,000 people. Um, and Rochester is a great one. There's some specialty industries there. Um, you have large residential neighborhoods, um, very important in the local economy. It is not only a large urban area, and a, a very large city, but it's also it started expanded to the point where it absorbs the other surrounding um, settlements. So other cities around it um, become part of or connected to the metropolis, or the, the usually the, the central business district. So when we look at downtown Minneapolis, for example, um, places like Iron Hills and Shoreview depend on that urban core for employment, services, um, leisure, so the fact that you know, the Vikings are located in Minneapolis um, at what will, will be the new stadium, we uh, are a access that as a source of entertainment. So metropolises are, are usually very big, um, they usually incorporate more than one county, um, and have usually are the bigger um, uh, populated areas of any particular landscape. And so if you look at the metropolis of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, um, the more current um, population figures is not 2.9 million, but actually 3.4 million um, as of the most recent uh, census. Finally, when we look at a megalopolis, is when we actually see an agglomeration of many metropolises. Um, and so we can see this as being uh, a, connect, a connected landscape that has absorbed not only just one or connected to m surrounding cities or urban areas, but multiple metropolises. And so there's one we could look at along the co coast of Lake Michigan, uh, Chicago, but we could also look at um, Tokyo as being right now considered the biggest urban area in the world at over 35 million people. Or we could look at in the United States, the East Coast, um, you know, all the way down to uh, from New York City, Boston to New York City to Washington, D.C. Um, could be considered a megalopolis. That it's that urban area has been connected um, even though they developed independently as independent uh, metro areas. Now we're going to look at what's called the rank size pattern or rule and primate city rules that define how settlements develop. When we look at the rank size rule, it's a general principle saying that population is going to be one nth of the largest settlement. So if it's the second largest city, it'll be half of the largest settlement in terms of population. If it's the third biggest city, it'll be one third of the population of the third biggest city, of the biggest city. So just as a quick example, we can look at New York City, which is approximately 20-some um, million people, low 20s, in Los Angeles, which is about 13 million people, and it's about half. So, and then if we look at Chicago, which is somewhere around 8 million people, it's about one-third, and so on. And we can see that New York City fits this rank size, or New York and the United States generally fits this rank size rule of population. If we look at another country, Indonesia, we see an example of what's called a primate city rule. And this is where the largest city, in this case Jakarta, is more than half or more than twice the size of the second largest settlement. Now, this doesn't have any bearing on development. Um, you know, Jakarta or Indonesia maybe isn't as developed in the United States, but uh, London is, is an example of another primate city in the UK. But what we're saying is that there's a lar one major urban area that is 
dominates the landscape and usually is the primary source of distribution of all goods and services. So there's some geographers would say that, that um, countries need, should have a primate city, but that isn't necessarily always the case. There's a lot of other geographic factors that contribute to whether or not a country or a state has a primate city um, rule in effect. But again, what it takes is the largest city must be twice the size of the next settlement size. So, taking a review of uh, looking at what we've covered today, urban hierarchy and the, the elements of the ladder, or the hierarchy of the urban settlement pattern, we have the rank size rule and the primate city rule that you should be now familiar with. What I'd like you to do for tomorrow is to follow the link that you see here and identify a Minnesota city um, or town or hamlet or village that fits each of those stages of the urban hierarchy except for the megalopolis. You can drop that off. But So you have the hamlet, village, town, city, and metropolis. Have the city and the population. You can easily access that information on the site um, listed here.